This is problem 4-61E. It's on page 201. One cubic foot of air is contained in the spring-loaded piston cylinder device shown in the figure below. The spring constant is 5 pounds force per inch. So let's jot this down. It's so 61E. Spring constant K is 5 pound force per inch. Piston diameter, I'll call that V, is 10 inches. When no force is exerted by the spring on the piston, the state of the air is a 250 PSIA and 460 degrees Fahrenheit. This device is now cooled until the volume is one half its original size. So we've got V2 equals V1 uh, over 2. Determine the change in the specific internal energy and enthalpy of the air. Okay. So we want delta U, delta H. Right, those are the questions. Okay, let me start by drawing the system. And I'll have to wrap my head around this. One thing I, I was thinking about this during the break, I'm not sure what they mean. It, they said that the volume is one cubic foot, but they didn't make it clear if that volume occurs at the point where there's no pressure, or where there's no, uh, I'm sorry, no spring force on the system. And if they don't tell us that, they haven't told us the mass in the system, so we couldn't get at the uh, volume of the system any other way. Let's see. So I, I think I have to assume that basically they've given us state one information. Does that make sense? I think that's kind of what they're saying. Because they say have enough force is exerted, and then they give the two okay. PSI and the temperature. Okay, thank you. And then it's cool, so. Right, right. Okay. So thinking, let, let me draw the system and then I'll, I'll ask you the next question. So if this is the piston and then we're going to cool the gas and there's a spring up here, then as the gas cools, it's going to shrink, right? And so I would expect the volume in the system to go down when we get to state two. In fact, well, we're given that, right? The volume in state two is half the volume in state one. So that makes sense. And then the boundary work, you guys realize by now that there's going to be boundary work with this, right? Is the boundary work flowing into or out of the system? It's a little bit tricky because there's two parts to it, right? There's the atmospheric boundary work that's obviously, the atmosphere's winning, so work's flowing in as far as the boundary's concerned. But what about the spring? The spring's resisting that motion. If the spring is not stressed at this point, but the spring is, the spring's trying to pull it back, right? So there's actually two parts to the boundary work that we need to consider here. We have to be careful about that. Uh, I haven't wrapped my head around it completely. I'll do that as we go along and see what we come up with. All right, so they didn't tell us how much heat was lost. They did tell us the volume in state two. So let's see if we can uh, figure this out. What, what do you think I should start with here? Any ideas? Probably an energy balance, right? An energy balance is always a good way to go. So let's try that. Q in less Q out uh, plus work in less work out equals the change in total internal energy. So where are we going to get enthalpy from? Well, we'll have to fi figure out the temperature change. Once we do that, we could actually back calculate the enthalpy change, but technically, there's not enthalpy in the air, there's only internal energy. Okay, So we'll have to be careful how we approach that. There's apparently no heat transfer in, there's only heat transfer out, but we don't know its magnitude. Okay, So let's, let's see what we can do here. We know the pressure is not going to be constant, the temperature is not going to be constant, but at least we could talk about the volume. The volume is a cubic foot here. If it's half in state two, then that volume is a half Foot. So let me get rid of the given information that we've used up. Now, we can also figure out the amount of mass in the system. That shouldn't be too difficult. The mass in state one, we could just use the ideal gas law to figure it out. It would be, let's see, PV equals MRT. 
So would it be P1 V1 over R over T1? Right? So P1 is 250 PSI A. V1 is a cubic foot. The gas constant for air in English units, I think I know it, but I'm not certain, so I'm going to look it up. Let's see, it's in the first page of the second appendix. Air has a gas, well, there's two of them, right? There's one that's BTUs per pound per degree per ranking. The other one is PSIA cubic feet per pound mass per ranking. Which one do you think we ought to use in the gas law? PSIA. PSIA, that's the one that's easier, right? That's 0 .3704. You guys see that? I'm on page 958. That's the one that'll make our lives easier. 0 0.3704 BTUs. No. <laughs> Gotta use the wrong one. PSIA cubic foot per pound mass per rain king. Okay, so there's R and then the temperature. Well, we've got a small problem because the temperature is in degrees Fahrenheit. We want it in Rankine. What do we have to add to this? 460 more. Okay, it's kind of weird that they gave us 460, but anyway, so that's going to end up being what? 920 Rankine. 460, 460 be 920. All right, so 920 Rankine. Be careful. You have to use absolute units in the ideal gas law. Anyway, the PSI and the cubic feet all go away, and we're left with pounds mass. So plug this in your calculator, please. And what I'm going to do is erase this bit. And again, as I said, I'll work this out on paper for you guys and add it to the examples in the PDF so you've got that. But um, I'm going to need space for the sake of the video. So plug this in your calculator. 250 over 920 over 0 0.3704. What do we have? 0 0.734. 0 0.734? Yes. And I think I heard someone agree to that. Okay. So there's the mass of the system. Well, now we know the mass in, well, I shouldn't have a 1 here, right? It's the same mass in state 1 and state 2. So that's helpful. helpful. So we got volume and mass. What else? Height, I don't think you need it. What were you going to say? We can get the height. I'm not sure. That's where I was going next because from here we can get the area. The area would just be pi d squared over 4. So let's do that quickly. So 10 squared is 100 divided by 4 is 25. What's 25 pi? Diabetes. How much? No, <laughs> 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 diabetes. 25 pi is diabetes. Okay. 78.5. 78.5. Okay, so let's just write that in. So the area from the diameter is 78.5, and that would be square inches. Since we're working with feet as well, let's convert that. I'm going to move the pressure information and temperature with the state. I don't think we're really interested in the 460 degrees Fahrenheit. So just divide that by 144 and what's the area? 0.545. square feet. Okay. All right, so there's the area. So then if we know the volume is a cubic foot, we should, like you said, be able to get the initial height. It would just be the volume over the area, right? So take uh, uh, the number you've got in your calculator, the 0.545, inverted essentially, at least mathematically, and that will be the height in state one. 1.833. One point eight three three. Did I hear you correctly? Yes. Okay. So there's the initial height for state one. The height in state two is going to be half that, right? Because the area hasn't changed. If the volume cuts in half, the height has to cut in half. So just take it, since you still got it in your calculator, divide it by two. And what do we have for the height in state two? I'm sorry? 0 0.92. 0.92 feet. Okay, thank you. Now, you know what, actually the spring force, or the spring constant was, was given in pounds per inch. So how about if we, uh, let's see, let's convert it to pounds force per foot instead. So just take it, and what's 5 over 12? 5 12 is how much? Uh, wait a second, would that be right? We've got uh, 12 inches, we have to multiply by 12, so it's 60. 
60 pounds force per foot would be better. Okay, so we can figure out what's going on with this spring because if the spring starts off unstressed here, the difference in height of the change we can calculate and then we can calculate the spring work. So the spring work, you guys remember the equation for spring work? It was in another chapter, it wasn't in chapter four. Let's see, I think it was at the end of chapter two. One half K squared. Go to page 97. And in the left hand column, you'll see the equation if you need it. But you're right, it's one half KX squared less another X squared. In our case, we won't have the second X squared because, uh, well, let me write it out. X1 or X2 first? X2. X2. And remember that these x's are really delta x's. They're displacement from the rest position of the spring. Okay? In our case, if we're making these state numbers, then this would be 0. We're going to have to be a little bit careful here, though, with the sign. The k is 60 pound force per foot. The displacement from rest, that's going to be the difference between these two, which will end up being 0.92 feet. Does that make sense? Because here the spring is not stretched. Here it is stretched, but the distance from here to here is just 0.92 feet. Okay, so let's take 0.92 feet squared, and let's see, that'll give us foot-pounds force of energy, or pounds force feet, I would prefer. So 30 times 0.92 squared is how much? 25.4. Pounds force feet of energy. Now, do we need a positive or a negative here? Well, like I said before, the spring is really resisting all of this, right? So the gas is doing work against the spring. That means that's work flowing out of the gas. Make sense? So when I plug in the spring work, let's let's expand this just a little bit. Uh, we don't know Q out. There is going to be boundary work in from the atmosphere. And uh, there will be work that comes out due to the spring. Well, the, this is going to be where we put it. It has to have that negative sign on it. Does that make sense? Okay, so we know what the spring work is going to be. Let's just write it down. The spring work with the sign I've got there is going to be 25.4 pounds force feet. Okay. Alright, so let's see what we've got. We don't know the atmosphere's boundary work. Uh, we don't know Q out. We know the spring work. And do we know delta U? No, I don't think we know that yet. So, so far we still have three unknowns. I hope I have enough video time. That looks like we're doing okay. Now, this is going to be a little bit tricky, but if we look at the amount of boundary work the atmosphere adds, how could we calculate that? Well, the atmosphere operates at constant pressure, right? So couldn't we do a constant pressure calculation something like P delta V because I'm talking about what the atmosphere is putting in not from the gases perspective okay I think we can accommodate the boundary work from the atmosphere this way so we would just need the atmospheric pressure multiplied by delta V now if the pressure in the system is 250 psi a uh, it seems strange that we would have to assume if the volume of the atmosphere because on the other side, in the diagram, you said it's holding top. Right. That's true, but I think we'd still use this volume change because essentially the atmosphere does work through a distance. And remember, that's the distance where this volume came from. So this is not so much talking about the change in the volume of the atmosphere as it is the distance through which the atmosphere was allowed to, allow, to apply its pressure to the piston and cause that motion. It seems strange to think about. I'd rather think of it as a vacuum from the gas side. 
Okay, however you want to think about it, it's still, we still live under this ocean of air where there's pressure on every square inch, right? And that's actually a very significant amount of force. And that force is acting through a distance doing the work. Okay? And that's why I think that this will work out for us. But we'd have to use the atmospheric pressure. Now, where I'm a little concerned is it seems strange that we would have to assume the atmospheric pressure. And so I may be missing something here. My numbers may not come out to quite what they've got. There may be a simplification where we can combine some things. I don't know. Uh, we may actually be able to combine this over here with delta U to include the atmosphere's contribution. But I'm not sure about that because I don't know how the temperature is going to change. Anyway, so let's assume a pressure. We're in English units, so let's just assume the atmospheric pressure is 14.7 PSIA so we can work on this. Okay? We know the volume change, so we should be able to come up with the atmospheric work. So the pressure is uh, 14.7 PSIA. The volume change is a half cubic foot. Now, notice we've got pounds force per square inch. So to get this into pounds feet, we'll have to convert the square inches in the denominator. So 144 square inches per one square foot. So plug this in your calculator. 14.7 times a half times 144 is how much? Point four, and this would be uh, pounds force feet to account for the boundary work from the atmosphere. Okay, now how about Q out? Did they not tell us anything about Q out? It's not cool. I think I'm missing something simple. Let me pause the video so I don't run out of time because I only have a few minutes. Okay, here's what we've discovered. I think what we need to do here is think about it this way. I suspect we can get the pressure in state two more directly because at this point, the pressure in the cylinder is due to atmospheric pressure and the weight of the piston, right? The pressure is only going to decrease by an amount due to the spring pulling back, okay? We still have atmospheric pressure plus the weight of the piston, which gives us 250 PSI, except the spring's pulling back. In fact, we could calculate how much the spring's pulling back. We know the deflection of the spring, right? The spring is deflecting by 0.92 feet. So the amount of force in the spring is simply going to be the spring constant, 600 or 60 pounds force per feet, multiplied by 0.92 feet. So the spring's pulling back with however much force that is, almost 60 pounds. So plug that in your calculator, please. 60 times 0.92, and what do we get? 55.2. 55.2 pounds force. Okay. Now we can figure out the pressure that the spring is reducing by taking that force over the area of the piston, which we already calculated. Well, here it is. That'll be what we mean. Uh, well, no, we want it in PSI. So the difference in pressure due to the spring, it's going to be a reduction, right? Because the, the spring's pulling up on the piston. So all we have to do is take the spring force over area. So take 55.2 and divide it by 78.5, so we'll have PSI. Point seven. Have I done something wrong in my calculations? Two feet. That makes sense. Pound feet. Yeah, that's okay. All right. So how much? Point seven zero three. So almost not worth talking about. Mm -hmm. And so that tells me that this spring work is. Uh, very, very small. In fact, you can see it here. Look, we calculated the spring work as 25.4, and the atmosphere does 1,000, right? So the spring's hardly doing anything. The atmosphere is doing a lot. And when you first look at this, you would think, well, the spring is the main thing, and it isn't. Okay? We've already seen that. So I'm, now that I see that, I'm not really as surprised. So we could subtract off from 250 PSI I guess we could do this, right? So the pressure in state two is going to be pretty darn close to the same thing. 
Okay, so that would be 249, let's say 0.3, just to be reasonable, PSI A. Okay, and now we should be able to get the temperature in that state because we've got the mass, the volume, and the pressure. Uh, I don't want to get rid of that yet. In fact, let me uh, copy this over here. The boundary work due to the atmosphere was 1,058.4 pound force feet. Notice that's energy coming into the system. Okay. And we've got the change in that. That's pretty much the negligible anyway, so we may as well just erase it. Let me put the PSIA down here. Okay, so uh, where were we? What was I going to do next? I've lost my train of thought. Oh, let's get the uh, temperature in state two. So the ideal gas law, if we rearrange it, PV equals MRT, we have P2V2 over uh, R. Now let's see, MRT, how about MR? We've got the mass in the system, so we should be able to do this. So the pressure in state two, 249.3 PSIA. The volume in state two is one half a cubic foot. The mass in the system is 0 0.734 pound mass. And the gas constant we've already used is 0 0.3704. Uh, PSIA cubic foot per pound mass per Rankine. And if I went off the video, I apologize. It's just the gas constant for air. Pound mass goes away, PSIA goes away, cubic feet go away. We're left with Rankine, so this makes sense. So plug this in your calculator, please. 249.3 times a half divided by 0.734 divided by 0.3704. And then we'll see if our temperature in state two makes any sense to us or not. That 458.45. 0.6 shrinking, close enough? 0.5. Okay. Well, you said 5, 8, right? So around the 6. 4, 8. 4, 8, where is it? 4, 8. Oh, 4, 8. I have a hard time speaking. So do I. <laughs> That's what I wrote in China. Okay, so 458.5 ranking. So the temperature dropped. Well, let's see. Yeah, that makes sense. The gas is cooling. And even though the atmosphere is putting energy in, because of the cooling, the gas compresses. Yeah, this does make sense. It makes sense that the temperature would go down. I'm, I'm okay with that. All right, so now let's continue. Uh, if we know the temperature in that state, and let's see, then we can evaluate the right-hand side, can't we? And then we'll be done. Because this right-hand side could be written as M C sub V delta T. So let's evaluate that side and see what we've got. All right, so let me just jot down T2 is 458.5 ranking. And in fact, we really don't even have to go through the energy. Did they ask? Yeah, they asked for Q out, didn't they? Or not? No, they asked for specific internal. They didn't ask for it. Okay. Well, we can get what they want just by evaluating this part, since we've got the temperature in state two, then we can do a CP delta T. But, because it's interesting, it's interesting, right? We're going to calculate how much Q out happened, okay? So let's do all of this together. So T2 we've got, and uh, yeah. So CB delta T, CB, uh, I've got it memorized in metric units, but not English units. So let's go back to the uh, back of the book in the appendices and look for the constant volume heat capacity of air. Oh, I do know that. I guess it's been a while since I taught, taught thermos. So CV is 0 0.171 BTU per pound mass per Rankine. Delta T, we want final minus initial, so that's a negative change, right? So final is 458.5 initial is 920 ranking. The ranking will go away and we'll get BTUs per pound mass. So all we're doing is we're calculating delta U, the specific internal energy change. Okay, so if you guys would plug this in your calculators, 458.5 less 920 multiplied by 0.171 is how much? 
That's about it. Minus uh, 78.9. BTUs per pound mass. So there's the specific internal energy change that they asked for. So that's delta U. How do we get delta H? Well, delta H would just be CP delta T, right? Now, CP for air in English units is 0 0.24, 0.240 BTUs per pound mass for ranking. So the same change, 458.5 less 920 ranking, the ranking goes away. So how about the delta H, how much is it? So that's what they wanted to know. Now let's find out QL. We don't need the top energy balance anymore. And what I'll do is I'll solve for Q out from here. Basically, I have to move it to the other side and move this term to this side. So I'd be left with boundary work from the atmosphere minus spring work. I'm just abbreviate with SPR minus MCV delta T equals Q out. Okay? Hang on, your delta U, I think, isn't your delta U wrong because you, no, whoever did it, OJ, I don't think more. Did you not multiply by mass? It needs to be negative 57.9. Okay. 